Hello world, Dave here. Going to talk to you today about some real demonic activity that is really serious. And I hope you watch the whole video and share it. Because uh, if you think about this carefully and, and relate this to world events, it's my sincere prayer that it makes sense to you. Now, a couple of years ago I came across a book called Pawns in the Game. And I read as much of it as I could and it's pretty impressive what is in this book, seeing as how it was published in the late 1950s, 1959. Now first of all, what's important to know is that this book states that Christ came to the earth because Satan had now accomplished control over all of the ruling factions, all, all of the ruling cities, all of the governments of the world. And you have to understand that it's important to know Genesis because that's when Lucifer or Satan was cast from heaven and he was so beguiling he took a third of heaven's host with him. And so they're going to terrorize the earth because that's how God's building his heavenly kingdom. And so when Christ goes to start his ministry, he goes out into the desert to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. And while he's doing that, Satan approaches him. And he hits him with three temptations. And one of those temptations, he showed him all the kingdoms of the earth. And he said, bow down and worship me, and I will give you the keys to these kingdoms. Well, how can he do that? Because he has the kingdoms. And of course, Christ was not overcome by that. He answered him with scripture. And so, this book called Pawns in the Game by William Guy Carr, who was in the Canadian military in the early 1900s, began researching the Illuminati from what he had heard about. And I'm going to share some of the things with you in this book because hopefully what you notice going on today that's in the public school system and it's in the media, it's all over the entertainment and the media, talk shows especially and newscasts especially and public school especially, I've experienced it myself, is that you cannot think for yourself. The newscasters, you know, Don Lemon and, and all these other idiots on TV, The View, all those idiots, they all talk like you have to be told how to think, you have to be told what to do. And anyone with half a brain doesn't watch TV, let alone any of those shows. What you do is you watch Mark Dice because he does a great job of analyzing all of them and, and exposing them. Now, in this book, basically, what William Guy, uh, basically, what William Guy Carr talks about is, and, and think of the timeline of this, this is going back to the late 1700s, this is how far ahead these people are, okay? William Guy Carr talks about the Rothschilds and how they had already established control, uh, financial control, over Europe, and there's a man named Adam Weishaupt, Weishaupt, Adam Weishaupt, that they recruited to draw up their protocols, okay, their protocols, and I'm going to share to you, share with you the protocols. Now, what they want is they want to get everybody to hate each other. They want everybody to fight each other. They want everybody to believe that they need a one world government that will stop the wars. And they planned out in the late 1700s, they planned out three world wars. That's what this book talks about, okay? So, he says in this book that in 1784, an act of God placed the Bavarian government in possession of evidence which proved the existence of the continuing Luciferian conspiracy. Adam Weishaupt, a Jesuit trained professor of canon law, defected from Christianity and embraced the Luciferian ideology while teaching in Ingolstadt University. In 1770, the money lenders, who had recently organized the House of Rothschild, retained him to revise and modernize the age old protocols designed to give the synagogue of Satan ultimate world domination so they can impose the Luciferian ideology upon what remains of the human race after the final social cataclysm by use of satanic despotism. So what they do is, is, is they recruit people and they recruit people with sex bribery. He talks about in this book, they, they, he actually states directly, they buy out who they can and who they can't buy, they throw parties for and they invite them to these parties in terms of the politicians, in terms of judges, in terms of 
professors, uh, leaders in high places, all leaders in high places, they invite them to parties and then there's drugs there and there's children. Think of Weinstein and all of the recent coverage of sex trade and they catch them in very, very compromising positions and of course they photograph them. And once these leaders in high places are made aware of these photographs and how this will ruin their lives and their careers, they will do what they're told. And if you, if you look at how out of control our federal government is, it's obvious these leaders, the vast majority of them, are, are getting their marching orders from somewhere else. And the media control is, of course, incredible. It's, it, it, the media is what really controls everything that goes on, not only in America, but of course the rest of the world. Now, um, he also says in this book that the, Illumini, the Illuminati were to obtain control of the press and all other agencies which distribute information to the public. News and information was to be slanted so that the goyim which is the Zionist word for anim for us, you and I, anyone who isn't a Zionist or a Jew, they have a word for us which means cattle or animals. The word is goyim, would come to believe that a one world government is the only solution to our many and varied problems. A German author named Zwack put Weishaupt's revised version of the age-old conspiracy into book form and named it Einige Original Skripten. In 1784, a copy of this document was sent to the Illuminists Weishaupt had delegated to foment the French Revolution. The courier was struck dead by lightning as he rode through Ratisbon on his way from Frankfurt to Paris. The police found the subversive documents on his body and turned them over to the proper government authorities. So keep in mind, this, this, is, this is planned out. Here is also a picture of their insignia, the insignia of the Order of the Illuminati. And uh, hopefully what you do is you take a look at your dollar bill. Take a look at the back of your dollar bill and see what's on there. Again, this is going back <laughs> over 200 years. Um, you'll see in this picture too that um, Jefferson made the reverse of the seal. Uh, there's people that disagree with that. It takes a lot of digging to get into that history. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, I'd also like to say that there's so much detail in this book that you can find it easily for free online, PDF download, read, uh, read it. It's, it would take so many videos to cover the detail in this book. So, um, according to Weishaupt's revised version of the age-old conspiracy, the Illuminati were to organize, finance, direct and control all international organizations, all international organizations and groups by working their agent tour into executive positions at the top. Noam Chomsky said, Noam Chomsky, what a genius he is, said, all systems are controlled from the top down. All systems, school systems, financial systems, systems of entertainment, all systems controlled from the top down. Between uh, 1859 and 1871, now this is fast forwarding a little bit, but this is from the introduction of the book. Um, these, these Illuminati worked out details of a military blueprint for three world wars and three major revolutions which he considered would further the conspiracy to its final stage during the 20th century. These people are way ahead, way ahead, and they have secret knowledge. Here's, a, here's another very interesting point in this book. It says, World War III is to be fomented by using the differences the age and tour of the Illuminati stir up between political Zionists and the leaders of the Muslim world. The war is to be directed in such a manner that Islam, their world including Mohammedanism, and political Zionism, including the state of Israel, will destroy themselves while at the same time remaining nations, once more divided against each other on this issue, will be forced to fight themselves into a state of complete exhaustion physically, mentally, spiritually, and economically. Can any unbiased person can any unbiased and reasoning person deny that the intrigue now going on in the near, middle, and far east isn't designed to accomplish this devilish, pur devilish purpose? This is published in 1959. Look at what has happened since then. 
they brought about all this. That's what's going on in the Middle East. The book also goes on to say, We shall unleash the nihilists and atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of origin of savagery, savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. Then, everywhere, the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity whose deistic spirits will be, from that moment without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowing where to render its adoration, will receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out in the public view, a manifestation which will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Now that paragraph is so loaded, it's incredible. Scripture in Revelation and in other places states that there will be an Antichrist. Did not this paragraph just say that? Did it, did it not just corroborate that? Everything is leading to the appearance of an, of an Antichrist. Is the world, is the majority of the world not disillusioned right now by Christianity? Real Christians are not. I'm not. But many people, many people hate God. And I mean intensely hate God, not just turn their backs on it. They get angry. They want to fight. They want to beat people up who are preaching the word. Um, here's something, here's another point that's important to make because he talks in this book about how they financed Karl Marx. Okay, well, after this is over, go and get the Communist Manifesto and read what the Ten Planks of the Communist Manifesto. And keep in mind that what I'm about to read to you was published before the Communist Manifesto. Now, Remember, these people remain behind the scenes. Who knows who they are? Bill Gates is one of their front men with probably, without probably even knowing it. He's all buddy-buddy with Weinstein, too. Uh, they keep their identity and true purpose secret, even from the vast majority of those they deceive into doing their willing and their will and furthering their secret plans and ambitions. Now, here is what some of their protocols are. Abolition of all ordered national governments, abolition of inheritance, abolition of private property, abolition of patriotism, abolition of the individual home and family life as the cell from which all civilizations have stemmed, abolition of all religions established and existing so that the Luciferian ideology of totalitarianism may be imposed on mankind. Think of how these things have been brought about, how prominent they are in our world now. Think of what has all led up to them. It is so important for you to see that this was published a long time ago and that the forces acting on this are way ahead of us. And they are satanic. These are demonic forces bringing this about. And, and their sex bribery is very real. Just look up Boys Town in Indiana. The story, Bo the story of Boys Town in Indiana is, is a documentary so shocking. Only people who really want to pursue the truth will actually think about it and believe it. It's, it's a story about how Bush and Reagan were involved in, in molesting boys in Indiana. Read the book Program to Kill. Uh, that's an amazing book that goes into a CIA mind control program. And, uh, and he also has an amazing chapter on little Jean Benet, the little beauty queen, and what really happened with her. And um, Think of the movie Eyes Wide Shut by Stanley Kubrick. He covered these satanic rituals that go on in that movie. He was told not to release that movie, and he did, and he died a short time later by a heart attack. And his family believes he did not have a heart attack. Um, so many things to think about in regards to, to this book and to scripture especially. This is a spiritual war that is going on, has been going on since the fall, and all these people want to do is see us fight each other. That's, these are the forces behind Black Lives Matter. This, this is why uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, who did nothing but good, is held in jail. 
Uh, recently, uh, a black kid shot at, uh, killed people at a school and was released. He's not even being punished. Um, all this division and hatred, all of the, all of the hedonism, um, anything that goes against God's created order, uh, uh, the structure of marriage, strong families, children, um, that's all being dissolved and done away with. Uh, perversion and fornication is, is promoted everywhere. Um, I cannot urge you enough to get this book and read it. And if you really, if you really consider yourself to have some serious backbone, read Program to Kill. That book is deep, down, dark, and ugly. And, and the CIA is involved in it. And, and, there, and Ted Ferguson, an FBI agent, uh, was killed by poison, covering how the CIA is involved in kidnapping children through Children Protective Services. And they use them in ritual satanic sacrifices. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I'm just trying to give you food for thought here. And another thing to think about, too, in the United States government is um, Hoover, J. Edgar Hoover. He was head of the FBI for 60 years. Somebody explained to me how somebody holds that position for 60 years through all those presidents. He did it by bribing people, bribing politicians, catching them in compromising positions, photographs, and recording them. That's, that's a known fact that you, you can verify that easily by doing short searches on the internet and looking up YouTube videos on that. But he didn't learn it on his own. He was compromised himself. I've seen video footage of CIA agents talking about how J. Edgar Hoover was caught in a compromising position with Clyde Tolson, his gay lover. Those guys lived together. So it just, it goes on and on and on. So you see, Christ was now tempted by Satan, and Scripture goes on in Ephesians 6.12 to say that our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but with its spiritual forces of darkness who control those high places on earth. So that's what I'll go into with this book, Pawns in the Game. And uh, just always keep in mind when this book was written, and if you do follow through and get this book and read it, it's it's... Pretty amazing to think of how far ahead they are and some of the details that are covered in this book. It's a great book. So it's very important, I think, after watching this video that you realize, first of all, share it with people and realize how important it is to think about giving your life to Christ. He came to this earth, allowed himself to be crucified on the cross so that if you put your faith and trust in him, your sins can be forgiven, you repent, and that is how you gain salvation and everlasting life. Life. He's the only way to God. He was God, He is God, and He always will be God. So, I hope this video helped you, and I hope you follow through again. And um, get these books and read them. They're, you can find them for free online, free PDF downloads. Thanks again for watching. Please share and uh, take care.